Welcome to another episode of EQ, or Evolution Quickies. In today's episode, I answer a viewer question, how does an electric car heat the cabin in the winter if it doesn't have a gas motor making all of that extra heat? Well, stick around, I'll let you know in two seconds. I want to start by saying thank you to everybody who posted some nice comments on Facebook and here on YouTube with regards to my wife who was hurt at the end of November. Don't worry, she's fine now, but uh, all of you sending those kind words is greatly appreciated by both my wife and myself, so thank you very much. It does mean a lot to us. Now, because my wife was hurt at the end of November, it's been three months I haven't posted a video, so thanks for your patience while I get back into the swing of things. When you take three months off of making videos, it's kind of hard to get back into the amount of work that's required to actually make one of these. Now, with that being said, over three months, my subscriber count growth didn't stop. And I want to say a giant thank you to all of you who have subscribed to my channel so far. As of the posting of this video, I've broken 10,000 subscribers. And that's been a milestone that I've been looking at for a very long time. Thank you very much. Growing this channel means that I can make more videos because a subscriber number, although it really doesn't mean anything, it's kind of a number that people look at to judge your credibility, which is kind of sucky, but that's the way it is. So if you can please consider clicking on that subscribe button if you haven't already done that to help me grow my channel and gain that credibility that's required to attract the attention of major manufacturers like those who've already supported me, which are Kia, Polestar, and Hyundai, as well as Imperium, that's because of you watching these videos and clicking on that subscribe button. Now, let's actually get to the subject of this video. As many people know, a gas-powered car heats the cabin in the winter by using the excess heat created by the gas-powered motor. Now, what happens in an electric car when you don't have millions of little explosions happening under the hood to heat the cabin of the car? Well, there are three technologies, two that are commonly used today, and one that was used in older EVs. Now, that oldest technology is called resistive heating. Now, resistive heating, the easiest way to compare that, is the electric baseboard in your house. Now, it's basically a resistor. You pass current through it, it heats up, and that's where you get your heat. Now, the great advantage is that it's cheap and it's quick. The disadvantage is that it costs a ton of electricity to actually generate that heat, so not very efficient. If you look at some of those first-generation Nissan Leafs, the resistive heating would cause a huge power drain, so the car's range in the winter was not only affected by the cold weather on the battery, but because those heaters were taking a ton of power. Now, the two other methods of heating an electric car are what are used in modern cars today. And that first one is a newer version of the resistive heater. It's called a PTC heater, or a positive temperature coefficient heater, which is essentially a self-regulating resistor. So what that means is it draws a ton of power initially, and because of the material it's made of, it increases resistance and reduces the power drain that's on the battery. So it quickly draws a lot of electricity and quickly reduces that automatically once it reaches the desired temperature. This has an advantage of being self-regulating, meaning that you can't get thermal runaway and it doesn't cause fires like a regular resistive heater can do if the controller gets out of control. It also has the advantage of being far more efficient, in quotes, far more, it will take a ton of power initially, but will quickly drop that power consumption once it reaches its temperature, which isn't very long. Now, the Kia Niro EV actually has a PTC heater in it, and I'll put an image of the diagram of what it is in the car, as well as what a PTC core looks like for a Kia product. Now, a more modern version and a way more efficient version to heat the cabin of your electric car is with a heat pump. Now, a heat pump is not a heater, it actually is a heat pump, meaning it transfers heat from one place to another place. Now, the advantage here is that it is far more efficient, and it needs to take that heat from somewhere. Essentially, it takes it from the outside air and transfers it to the inside of the car. Now, there are tons of videos out there that explain how heat pumps work, and there are far more intelligent people than me that can show you how that works. So, you can do a little Google on how heat pumps work to get a better understanding if that interests you. 
One quick note about heat pumps is that it depends on the version of heat pump that you have in your car. Much like with heat pumps that are installed in houses, there are ones that work at lower temperatures than others. Now, all heat pumps in general will reach a point in temperature where they can no longer bring in heat from the outside. So that's where the secondary heating, like the PTC heating in the Kia Niro EV, kicks in to take over. So when it's minus 25, you're not stuck without heat. Something else that's important to note is that not all modern EVs actually include heat pumps. Now when I talk about modern EVs, I'm not just talking about the Bolt and Bolt EUV that were recently refreshed that do not have heat pumps, surprisingly enough. But the Tesla Model 3 and Model Y only started including heat pumps at the end of 2020. So yes, new cars have heat pumps because they're very efficient, but not all companies had included them from the get-go. Just before I answer the final question, should my electric car have a heat pump if I'm shopping for a new electric car, I want to let you know that because I finally reached my 10,000 subscriber goal, I will be having some Evolution t-shirts produced. Now, if you go to my website, you'll see at the top right there is a new login icon, and that's because I've got a shop page that's ready to go. I'm just waiting on the final details of those t-shirts in terms of cost so I can put the proper pricing. Now, with that being said, I do have social media links. If you're new to my channel, I'll put what they look like up here on the screen and I'll put them in the description below. I have a Facebook page where I post a lot of EV related news and you can ask me questions. I also have an Instagram account where I post all sorts of EV and non EV related things with my website as well, where you can see pretty much everything captured in one place, as well as all the products that I've purchased and many of them that I've already reviewed on my website. And I've got a Kofi account if you feel like buying me a coffee on Kofi. If you already have, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. And if you're about to, thanks. I appreciate it as well. Now, with that being said, should your electric car have a heat pump when you're shopping for a new electric car? The answer is yes and no. Now, depending on the car, you look at the Chevy Bolt. It never had a heat pump and it still doesn't. And yet it still has excellent range. Would it have more range if it did have a heat pump in it? Yes, but then it would increase the cost. Same thing with the Tesla Model 3 and Model Y. Now they didn't have heat pumps and they were excellent cars before, they're still excellent. And it's just that they're a little more efficient now that they've got the heat pump in them. The cost has increased though. So it's a question of cost versus benefit. Now when you look at an interesting priced car like the Imperium SEV SUV, the electric vehicle that's coming from Imperium Motors, it does not have a heat pump. Is it a big deal? It would be nice to have, but if it increased the cost of the car, of the SUV, by three, two, three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000, I don't think the benefit is worth that extra cost. We're looking at a very interesting entry level price for a vehicle that's got some premium details and specs. So should it have a heat pump in an electric car? It would be really nice. Is the cost always worth it? Not necessarily. So if the car that you're looking at has a heat pump as an option, I would say look at the climate that you're in. And if the climate is mildly cold, minus five Celsius, minus 10 Celsius, a heat pump will definitely be beneficial. But is it the end of the world if the car doesn't have it? Not necessarily. I hope this video answered your questions. And if it didn't, then please put them in the comments section below. And as always, thanks for taking the time to watch my video. I really appreciate it. In today's episode, I answer a viewer qu and today's episode. Now, because my wife was sort of my main focus while I was the heat for the cabin from the very inefficient a gas a gas a gas powered motor. As many people know, a gas powered car has the advantage advantage of creating a lot of what the hell. <laughs> Cat fur. Yum. From the explosions that happen in the engine, and in the winter, you use the heat from that motor to warm up the cabin that you're in. <laughs> Take number 10. Crap. Depending on the model of heat pump that's included in your car, there are different efficiencies. Some work at lower temperature temperatures. At lower temperatures. I wanted to let you know that because of my 10,000 subscriber goal being achieved, our Crap. I want to let you know that I'll finally, I'll be finally, I'll be finally being treating. Just before I get to the question, should my electric car have a heat pump if I buy a new one? If I buy a new heat pump? <laughs>